Hello, welcome to our lesson on solving for x with one-step division equations. In other words, one-step fraction equations. Uh-oh. Did I just say fractions? Eee. Don't worry. Fractions are simply put just the same as division. So if you've been able to get through multiplication equations or addition equations or subtraction equations, then getting through fraction equations is going to be a piece of cake for you. You're going to do fine. So let's go ahead and take a look at the steps for solving some fraction equations for a variable of x. These steps should look very familiar to us at this point. The three steps for solving any one-step equations will look like this. You find the variable, you ask what happened or what's connected to it, and then we're going to do the inverse operation to both sides of the equation. Here is our equation. x over 6 is, it, is equal to 3. x over 6. That means x divided by 6. So we found our variable, and what happened to it is that we are dividing it by 6. And notice the way that I'm saying that. I'm not saying dividing into. Um, I'm saying divided by 6. And, and that vocabulary is kind of important that we make sure to say it um, the right way, that it is x divided by 6. The top number divided by the bottom number, so that we can write it out here. And the inverse of dividing by 6 will be multiplying times 6. So we're going to multiply times 6 on both sides of this equation. It's going to look a little bit complicated. I'm going to put parentheses in there sometimes just to make it look a little bit more clear. But we're taking x divided by 6 and multiplying that times 6. Those are inverse operations, so they undo each other leaving us with x by itself on the left side of the equation. 3 times 6 is 18, and that's what we're left with on the right side of the equation. That's how we solve equations that have x in the top and a number in the denominator, x divided by some number. We always want to check our work, so here we go. We have our equation x divided by 6 is equal to 3. We're going to substitute 18 up into that equation for our x value. Is 18 divided by 6 equal to 3? Yes, it is. So our work is complete. The number one mistake that is made with this type of question, I need to warn you, is if there is a familiar number like 6 and 3, we know 6 divided by 3 is 2. And oftentimes when we see fractions, we tend to freak out a little bit and try and do try and skip a step and just go 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 must be my answer. When in fact with these division equations we're actually multiplying all the time. So just take a deep breath, make sure to follow the steps. If you're not completely sure, check your work and you'll, you will definitely verify that your work is correct. Now it's time to try one. Here are the three steps. And here is our equation, x over 9 is equal to 1. Go ahead and give that one a shot. When we're solving, we always find our variable. x is our variable in this case, and it is being divided by 9. So the inverse would be to multiply both sides times 9. Let's go ahead and do it. x divided by 9 times 9, they cancel each other out, and we're left with x by itself on the left side of the equal sign. 1 times 9 is equal to 9. So in this case, our x value is equal to 9. When I see that many of the same number, I always check my work. So here's my equation fully solved. I'm going to substitute the answer I got, x equals 9, back into the original equation and see if it checks out. Is 9 divided by 9 equal to 1? Yes, it is. So we've checked our work, and x is equal to 9. That's the correct answer for our final solution. We're going to take a look at some negatives now. Check out this example of solving for negatives. With the equation x divided by 15, or x over 15, is equal to negative 5. Notice I've thrown in some familiar numbers. We know 5 and 15 
evenly divide into each other. 5 is a factor of 15. 15 is a multiple of 5. But you cannot use that information. You need to follow the same three steps. So let's do it. Where's our variable? x. What happened? Divided by 15. So we are going to do the inverse multiplying times 15 on both sides of the equation. That'll look like this. x divided by 15 is being multiplied times 15 and negative 5 is being multiplied times 15. So our final answer is that x is equal to negative 75. We always check our work so let's go ahead and do that by substituting our value of negative 75 into the equation there for x. Negative 75 divided by 15 gives us a result of negative 5. Our equation's balanced, so our solution is that x is equal to negative 75. I want to show an example here of a special kind of negative. This negative, um, let me show you the equation negative x over 10 is equal to 3. This is an interesting situation because the negative is being applied to the entire fraction. So we have negative x over 10. The thing is with fractions and division is that if the negative were to go on the top, negative x divided by 10, the fraction would be negative because a negative divided by a positive gives us a negative. If the negative were to go on the bottom, positive divided by a negative, we would end up with a negative as well. So when you have this situation, you can actually move the negative to the top or to the bottom to make it easier to solve. And I'll show you how to do that. Our variable is x. What happened to it? I'm going to say x is divided by negative 10. The reason I'm doing that is because when I multiply times negative 10, the negatives will cancel out and I will be left with x by itself. That's what we want. We don't want that negative symbol being connected to the x. We want the negative connected to the number. That way we can cancel it out. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation times negative 10. I have my negative fraction times negative 10, which will give me a positive answer. Just x by itself on the left side of the equal sign. I have 3 times negative 10, which gives me negative 30. All right. I'm going to show you how to check this as well, but I hope that that's making sense. The negative is connected to the number. We don't write negatives in our denominators, though. So you just have to understand that if there is a negative, it's connected to wherever the number is. And that way we can get our x by itself and not have a negative x answer. We don't want that. So here's our equation. We're going to double check by substituting the value of negative 30 into this equation. Now it might look like this. The negative fraction with negative 30 on top and 10 on the bottom. But what it really is, is negative 30 divided by negative 10. Remember that negative is connected to the number. So negative 30 divided by negative 10, which gives us a positive result. So we can check our work, make sure that it's correct, even when it's confusing and has some negatives in there. We're going to finish things off with a question involving a decimal. Our equation is x divided by 9 is equal to 5.3. Go ahead and solve this question and then come back for the full solution and check. We found our variable x. We are dividing x divided by 9. Our inverse operation is to multiply both sides of the equation times 9. So it will look like this. x over 9 times 9 and 5.3 times 9. Notice it didn't change the steps to have that decimal in there. It won't. Decimals and negatives will not change the steps you follow to solving the equation. Now I'll just um, go ahead and multiply 5.3 times 9 gives us 47.7. I need to double check my work. When I'm working with fractions I always or with decimals, I always like to double check. So I'm going to plug the value of 47.7 into the equation right there. 
is 47.7 divided by 9 equal to 5.3? Yes, it is. I check that. It checks out. It's exactly equal to 3. Our work is done. Fabulous. Quick recap. Fractions mean division. They don't need to be something you freak out about. Fractions just mean division. And division is the inverse of multiplication. So when you see fraction equations, you're actually going to be doing multiplication to solve them. So that's kind of nice. And always be sure to check your work. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.